Hey what's up bros, welcome back to another Pokemon Sleep video, it's Bro Vinny here. Today we are talking once again about the Helper Whistle. That This here is the Helper Whistle. We now know more about the Helper Whistle than we did the last time I made a video about this. So I've got some new recommendations. My previous video still applies but it doesn't have as much of the new info as we do now. So we're going to talk about where to get them, how to best use them, and does energy affect the outcome of Helper Whistle? Because normally, energy would give you a boost of about two and a half times of your drops if you have 100% energy and when they're at 0%. So I'm going to prove to you today that no matter when you use the Helper Whistle, it's going to be two and a half times the drops. So it's as though your team members are at 100% energy. So by using the helper whistle, it triggers three hours worth of berries and ingredients. One thing to note is that skill specialists will be quite useless on your team if you're using the helper whistle because main skills are not triggered. So where to get them? You can get them in the regular exchange for 800 points. I think it's relatively expensive. Uh, you can get them in the general store for diamonds, for 200 diamonds. I think in terms of value, it's better to buy from the diamond shop than it is to buy from the sleep points shop. And the reason being, if you actually do the maths, it costs you 200 diamonds. That means about four times the amount in sleep points. So a multiplier of four if you were to buy in sleep points. Whereas if you compare to pokey biscuits, which costs 60 diamonds per pokey biscuit and in the regular exchange shop it only costs 150 sleep points per pokey cookie the multiplier is only about two and a half times so the exchange rate between diamond and sleep points is much worse for helper whistle in the exchange shop so i would say if you have to spend you should try and try to use your diamonds for helper whistle Unless you buy it in one of these packages up here, like a Snorlax bundle. And, you know, sometimes they come with it. So unless you get it from one of these. Okay, so regarding how to best use it. So this is my current team at Top Hollow. And I'm going to show you that my energy is getting really low. We're looking at close to about a one times multiplier. And I did the maths for my team to see whether Helper Whistle provides the strength of berries as though these Pokemon are at their current energy or at their 100% energy. After doing the maths, um, incorporating the level of the Pokemon, the berry type of the Pokemon, whether they're berry specialist and whether it's a favorite berry, all of those factors included. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch my how to calculate berry strength video. So I'm talking about this video here. How is it calculated? So we also need to incorporate the area bonus. And after incorporating all these factors like which berry type it is, what level your Pokemon is, the area bonus, whether it's favorite, you also got to add in the two and a half times multiplier for 100% energy Pokemon. So after doing the maths, um, I'm expecting to see just over 4,000 uh, a total strength from berries after using a helper whistle. Now, my recommendation for how you guys should be doing this is that ideally, you swap out for a team of all berry specialists. So let's say in this case, ideally I would have five Typhlosions or five Cyndaquils at least. You'll find that favorite berry with berry specialists are going to be a lot more effective. Definitely switch out any of these skill specialists before you trigger the helper whistle. So here I'm going to swap out for a Cyndaquil. I only have one Cyndaquil, so... Here, a Cyndaquil. I'm also going to swap out Ghastly just for um, uh, this Helper Whistle here. Don't worry, this Cubone won't make a huge difference. It's still going to be about 2,000 versus four to 4,500 difference if it's a one times multiplier versus a two and a half times multiplier. Uh, my Larvitar does have Berry Finding S also, so you have to consider that. So my starting count on my strength is 40,000. So from 40,000, I expect to go up to about 40, close to 45,000 total strength by the end of this helper whistle. Hopefully I did my maths right. So here we go. 
This is pure, I don't actually need to use this. Normally I recommend that you only use it if you need to reach the next tier for the day. Uh, so this is purely for research purposes. So let's have a look. Uh, we're gonna collect all of these. And you can count my ingredients also. And I'm gonna get Snorlax to keep eating. I won't tap on anyone else while we're waiting because that would skew the results. But I will just skip this part of the video while we're waiting. So we're not even halfway through the berries and you can see it's already shot over two and a half thousand strength. And we'll keep going. It didn't quite reach what I expected it to. So I just realized I made a mistake with my calculation earlier. I know I said four and a half thousand for the total strength from the energy whistle, but what I actually forgot to incorporate was the fact that 20% of the time, a Pokemon can drop ingredients. So they don't always drop berries and I completely forgot to incorporate that fact. So my four and a half thousand um, strength came from having all five members, having all of these factors considered, the berry type, the level, whether it's favorite berry, and then include the area bonus, and then times 2.5, because that is the 100% energy, otherwise it will be times one. But all of this uh, have to remove 20%, so let's say times 0 0.8. So in other words, four and a half thousand times 0 0.8, and it ends up being 3,600 which is pretty close to what I actually got. So what I actually got was about 3,400 in the difference between the start and end of the helper whistle. But one of my Pokemon actually has the nature ingredient finding up, which means a little bit of that berry strength was overestimated. So if we incorporate that, we should be close to about three and a half thousand. I'd say that's as close as I can get to the numbers for a hundred percent energy. So in other words, a helper whistle, I can confidently say, calculates your berries and ingredients at 100% energy. Not at the current energy or the 0% or the energy, which is one times multiplier. What does this mean for you? In other words, it doesn't matter if you use it at the start of the day or if, at, if you use it at the end of the day when your Pokemon are at zero energy. What does matter is why you're using it. So you want to use it to reach maybe the next tier in the Snorlax strength, or maybe you're using it to get some ingredients that you're, that you're missing. I, I personally wouldn't use it this way, but if you must, you can have like a full ingredient team and then run a helper whistle. I would say it's more effective to run a whole berry team for the berry strength, but we have different goals. So if that's what you need, that's what you do. The only thing that you shouldn't do is have any skill specialists in your team at all. Unless they have Berry Finding S, so it kind of makes them a Berry Specialist anyway. Try to use very fast Pokemon when you're doing the Helper Whistle with your Berry Specialists. Just means you get more strength at the end of the day. So hopefully this video clarifies any confusion around Helper Whistle. And if it did, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next video.